This is what my yard looks like. All the wild creatures coming in, getting a bite to eat. seem to get along as long as somebody has something to eat. Blessed. My screen is in the way. Uh, I don't want to open it. So I'm just peering through the window. They can't see me through the screen, but they can hear me. There are squirrels all the way back there. A variety of birds. Blue jays, crows, squirrels, sparrows, doves, mockingbirds, wobbler. And the other day I saw a woodpecker out there. He doesn't come here very often. This is around the 9 a.m. hour. Uh, no hawks yet. Happy little birds. My experience is if you put it in a birdhouse, they will fight over the birdhouse. If you put it in one location, like a bowl or a pail, they will fight over that. So you have to scatter it all over the yard. And what helps me is that all those little brown patches back there where the uh, lawn care people messed up the yard with their tires because they came and they cut the grass when it was too wet. That's what those brown patches are back there. And they're starting, they're actually starting to grow back now because the squirrels help massage the grass and the birds also because they peck for worms and stuff. But this is the little happy little backyard family, a little bird sanctuary back here. I find that if you put it out early in the morning, it will be gone by the afternoon. So you shouldn't have any problems with unwanted rodents at night, especially possums and stuff like that. So you have to put it out early, you know, at least by 8 a.m. and uh, they will feed on whatever you put out there. I usually just put seeds, sunflower seeds, walnuts, sometimes cashew nuts, uh, fruit. Mainly they will eat just about anything but I try to avoid giving them uh, bread products with yeast in it. I try to avoid that. You know, maybe some chips, some corn chips or something every now and then. They will eat uh, peanuts, which peanuts aren't really nuts. Those are more like a bean. So you have to be careful of those unless you chop them up really good. Uh, but usually walnuts, pecans, sunflower seeds, blackened seeds, bird feed, wild bird feed. Um, the black seeds are really like a sunflower seed. They're just roasted in oil. But um, they love this. You know, I got some cherries, but I gotta cut them up. 
It's better to use the blueberries, I think. Blueberries and blackberries. Uh, the cherries that kind of stain sidewalk and stuff. Those are the little tips. I had about seven squirrels back here. I own I still have an issue. Um there's gonna be an issue because there are so many more males than there are female squirrels. And they're getting close to the age where they're gonna be mating soon. I don't know how that's gonna work out with um so many males and hardly any females. I counted about six males. I've only seen two females and they're older, possibly the mothers of, of these little rascals here. But they should be about two months old now, uh, maybe a little more than two months old. I remember when they were really little and scrawny looking. They're getting big now and their coats are coming in real pretty. And they're just as quick. I don't think their vision is as good when they're young. But I think they can see better now. They killed my patio garden also. One of the crows had a limp, I guess, from cockfighting. And uh, I saw one dove lost a whole foot. And uh, I'm not sure if that was from the hawk injury last week or from fighting, fighting over the, the females. And um, so they dug up my broccoli roots. I guess they needed that to heal. And now he's walking better. He was back there a little while ago. But I caught him in my patio garden. I had to scram him out of there, but they will eat uh, roots. So you have to be, if you have a garden, you might want to put it in a little cage or a pen until they get big enough where they won't pull up the seedlings. Because uh, when they do that, um, they're usually looking for water. They get water from the roots. They also uh, get moisture from the roots, and they also get medicine from some of the seedlings, the sprouts. So they will eat your sprouts if you have a, a, a garden, a vegetable garden. Yeah, they ate my, um, my spinach, and they ate my broccoli, so I'm not going to have any broccoli or spinach. I, I have to bring everything back in the house and start over. And I have to keep the seedlings in the house. I might have to keep them in the house for maybe two months before I can put them out. Because they will dig it up. They will eat that. That's like, you know, when, when you see them pulling up roots, they're looking for water. Or they're getting medicine from the sprouts. You know, th that's where their antibiotics come from. From berries and uh, sprouts. And uh, that's how they protect themselves from sickness, illness, and things. They also get water from the trees. Uh, there are certain trees hold water, especially after heavy rain. And they dig into the bark. And you can do this too. You just poke a little uh, a nail in there and put a um, one of those little... Uh, spigots in there. Well, not a spigot, but kind of like a, um, I forgot what you call those things. But anyway, you put a peg in there and it will drip water for you. So if you're lost in the forest, you can get water from certain trees. I know birch trees hold water. And um, I can't remember. There's another tree that holds water. And now it's not going to come out like a tap faucet is going to come out in a slow drip but that's how they get their water so when you see birds pecking holes in the bark they're getting water from the bark 
They have you just have to peck through the bark down to the skin of the tree, poke a hole in there, and uh, it will drip. But it's it's a very slow drip. It may take you a few hours to get a couple of inches of water, and it may not come out that quickly. It just depends on how much precipitation you've had in the area. But if you're lost in the forest, you can get water from a birch tree. Um, white birch, yellow birch, they do hold water. You can get water from those trees if you can't get to a stream. This is the most high blessings. There's one on my porch. One came and knocked on my door the other day because I was late getting the nuts and the seeds out. So they came looking for me. They will actually tap on my window sometimes because they're used to this. But I've been doing it because of the winter storm. Um, and as long as my budget allows, I get a big bag of wild bird feed and black bird seed and I buy nuts and chips for myself anyway and fruit so I just th throw a little bit of that in there and uh, they just love it they love it yeah, he's digging right now they will dig like that to stash their nuts as well they can hear me, but they can't see me through the screen. <laughs> but all of this will be gone probably by 3, 4 o'clock before twilight. So there won't be anybody to... Um, uh, the, the nighttime predators are the ones that you have to be careful of. Uh, we do have raccoons in this area. We do have possums in this area. Um, I, I live close to the botanical gardens, and it's a, a it's a conservative. It's kind of like a forest preserve. So we get coyotes through here, especially in the winter time. We get red fox. Um, there was a fox family living over here, but animal control moved them out which doesn't make any sense because you're just going to relocate them right back over there to the National Forest over there, and they're going to come right back over here. That's only like maybe about a mile from me, and the Botanical Gardens is like a half a mile. I could, I could walk there, get there in 20 minutes. So um, that's why we have hawks and buzzards in the area. Buzzard is not a good sign sign of death. Um, there's either been a death or there's going to be a death whenever you see buzzards. So if you see a flock of buzzards, there's, there's something is there <clears throat> in your neighborhood that's dead. And they are, they are attracted to the rotting smell. I saw one pick up a hamburger that somebody dropped at the park the other day. And uh, I didn't like that at all because I don't want them over here. I don't want buzzers over here. They, they're the ones that attract the flies and stuff too. You know, because they have that smell of death on them. They eat dead carcasses and stuff and refuse. So you don't want those in your yard. You know, you definitely, if you see buzzers around your yard, you want to shoot those away. Uh, but the wild birds, the sparrows, doves, and all of the, uh, the hummingbirds and things, you want those in your yard. They will eat the insects and the flies as well. So um, squirrels also carry fleas, but um, if, they, if they eat well enough, they can pretty much groom themselves to where they can keep down pestilence themselves. They groom each other too. And that's the little nature program for today. The 
most high blessings. You see how he takes care of them? And if we take care of nature, nature will take care of us. Shalom.